Welcome back, I'm Alex, and we're once again with the 6.8 liter mini Godzilla V8 engine in this very nice looking standard cab long box F250 Super Duty. And just like the weather today, we're maybe jumping off the Rainbow Express, going on the darker side of things, because I'm going to talk about things that I don't like about this 6.8 liter mini Godzilla engine. Before we do go there, I have to say that I still think that this engine is a very good engine, and if I owned it, I would have very little worries as long as it was properly maintained. But there are some things that do seem to rub people the wrong way, and I tend to agree. Now, if you want to know more about this engine, I did a full review talking about some specs, as well as the things that I really liked about this engine last week, and I'll link that video up here down in the description. But for those of you who don't nope. want to watch that video, basically this 6.8 shares the exact same architecture as the 7.3 liter Godzilla, except this engine just has a shorter stroke. So 95% of this engine is exactly what you get with the 7.3 liter Godzilla. So let's get this thing into the shop and we can get into her because she's a little cold out here right now. Canada, baby. So right off the bat, the first thing that I don't like about this 6.8 liter engine is that we get a cast iron crankshaft, not a forged crankshaft like we get in the 7.3 liter Godzilla. In fact, this is the only HD engine in the segment that does not come with a forged crankshaft, both the 6.4 liter Hemi as well as the 6.6 liter um, LAT gasser in the GM trucks all come with a forged crankshaft. On my last video, I did sort of touch on why I think Ford may have gone with just a weaker cast iron crankshaft, not a forged crankshaft. And it all comes down to the shorter stroke on this engine. We talked about how with a shorter stroke, we're gonna get slower piston speeds, which means we have less inertial loading on the ro rotating assembly as well as the crankshaft. But also with a shorter stroke means we have a shorter crank throw, which means that all that cylinder pressure as that piston comes down is gonna be closer to the center line of the crankshaft and perhaps Ford felt like they didn't need that extra reinforcement in a forged crankshaft. That's why they put a cast crankshaft in here. Either way, I don't like it. I wish this engine came with a forged crankshaft like the 7.3 Godzilla. It is what it is. Now, interesting enough, as I'm editing this video, a viewer reached out to me and he has his own YouTube channel and made his own video about the 6.8 liter mini Godzilla. It's a great video. There's a ton of research into it and I'll link that video down below for you guys to check out. But he mentions that he believes the 6.8 liter actually has a forged crankshaft in the engine and that there really is only one piece of media info that shows the 6.8 liter Minizilla with a cast crankshaft. He does point out some decent evidence of a forged crankshaft. First off is the 2023 Super Duty media reveal where our friends at TFL were covering the brand new or the launch of the 6.8 liter mini Godzilla. And you can clearly see on the engine stand, it says forged crankshaft. The next bit of evidence is this PDF from Ford component sales involving the 6.8 liter engine. And if we come down to Key features and benefits, well, what's this right here? Forged steel crankshaft. Coming up to the specifications, yep, that's right. That bore and stroke is right. Uh, compression ratio, also right. Fuel injection is correct. The only thing on the sheet that's actually not right is this horsepower rating, 400 horsepower. This engine's actually rated for 405 horsepower. Even our oil weight is absolutely correct. The picture of the engine is that, well, that is the 6.8 liter. That's the oil cooler right there. Even the variable displacement oil pump is correct. So I'm not exactly sure what to make of this. Another thing I will point out is that this is from England, the UK not the US. I ended up going down to my local dealership and talked to the parts department to try and see if they could confirm whether or not this engine had a cast or a forged crankshaft. They gave me some part numbers, but couldn't confirm 100%. So I think I'm gonna email Ford. Either way, let me know what you guys think. It's uh, 
it is a compelling argument that this engine could have a forged crankshaft. I'm not 100% sure. The second thing I don't like about this engine is Ford decided to go with a variable displacement oil pump. The same oil pump that is on the 7.3 liter Godzilla. I understand a lot of the 1500 engines are going in that direction because it helps save fuel economy. And the last time I had the 7.3, Godzilla on the channel, I think I said it best. Why don't I like the variable displacement oil pump on this engine? Because Ford has pretty much done everything right when it comes to the design of this engine, in my opinion, going with just tried and true technology that has been in V8 engines for years. So why would they be concerned about saving a little bit of fuel when it comes to the oil pump? when every other design aspect of this engine fuel economy was really not taken into consideration or a concern. It's oil and this is a heavy duty gas engine. So give me as much oil volume as you can get during all RPM ranges. And typically with a variable displacement oil pump, we see anywhere from one to 2% fuel economy savings. So taking that higher end spec 2% fuel economy savings, if we were to get 15 miles per gallon out of this engine with a variable displacement pump, we would finish with 15.3 miles per gallon, 0.3 miles per gallon difference. I couldn't really care less. So it's confusing why Ford would put a variable displacement oil pump on this heavy duty engine where again, fuel economy seems to have not taken any precedent on any other design element of this engine. Secondly, a constant volume oil pump is just a simpler unit. So again, not a fan that Ford put a variable displacement oil pump on this engine. On a side note, I did say I like this upgraded front end, but <laughs> it's all just plastic. It's the way she goes these days, I guess. Plastic's cheap and it's light, but it does look pretty good. Well, I'm off the rails now. This front chin splitter, I freaking hate. It'd be the first thing I'd take off if I was to own this truck. I got to do a fuel economy run one of these days to see if this actually saves fuel because that's what it's there for, but I do not like it. The next thing I don't necessarily like about this engine actually has nothing to do with this engine. It's what's behind the engine in terms of the transmission. With the 6.8 mini Godzilla, you get the 10R100 transmission, whereas the 7.3 liter Godzilla can, as well as the 6.7 liter Power Stroke, they get the 10R140 transmission, which is a heavier duty spec transmission. So unfortunately, you are gonna have to settle with a lighter duty transmission behind this engine. Apparently all the trucks I have were run through the mud before I got them. So this is our 10R100 transmission under here. You can still see we get a very nice, pretty large transmission cooler, which is nice to see. And well, now that I'm down here looking at this transmission cooler, I don't necessarily like what I'm seeing because I believe these are coolant lines right here going into this transmission cooler. And we have these plastic fittings, which are sort of out and about. I mean, you can see they're all full of mud. It looks like Ford tried to put some protection on them, but these plastic 90 degree fittings here, I imagine they're gonna get cake full of mud, snow, silt, salt and who knows what's gonna happen there. Don't necessarily like that setup. Whereas on our oil cooler right there, you can see we just have coolant lines or hoses going right to the actual cooler, which is a little bit more what I like to see. Um, I just, from practice, plastic fittings when running coolant through them, they just, they're more likely to leak. I've replaced so many plastic coolant lines on big trucks, it's not even funny. But what's interesting is that not all 7.3 liter Godzilla engines come with that heavier spec transmission. A lot of them actually come with this same transmission here. So currently we have the 6.8 liter engine selected for our build here. And you can see we have the Torque Shift G transmission, which is the 10R100. Below it, we have the Torque Shift, which is the 10R140. And if we were to go back up and select the 7.3 as our engine option, you can still see that we have the torque shift G transmission as our transmission option with that engine. In fact, the only way to get an F-250, at least in 2026, with this 7.3 and this upgraded transmission is to have the Tremor off-road package with that truck, which also means you can only have it in a crew cab 4x4 configuration. And as far as I'm aware, that's the only way this 7.3 liter Godzilla engine can come with that upgraded transmission. The other option is going with an F-350, uh, because as far as I can tell, 
any 7.3 in an F350 is going to get paired with that 10R140 transmission. So that's kind of your options if you are dead set on getting the 7.3 with that upgraded transmission. Either you need to get an F250 tremor or you need to upgrade to an F350. Otherwise, you will be getting just your Torque Shift G or the 10R100 transmission. I hope that makes sense. So there you go. It does seem like most F250s with the 7.3 liter Godzilla engine in 2026, at least as far as I could tell, are gonna come with the lighter spec 10R100 transmission. Now, it could be seen as a downgrade for the 6.8 that you cannot upgrade to the heavier spec 10R140 transmission like you technically can with the Godzilla engine if you get that tremor package or you go with an F350. Um, so there is certainly something to be said there, but either way, with this 6.8 coming with a lighter spec transmission, it's really not anything new in the segment. And let me explain. So for the 6.4 Hemi in my own Ram 2500, it comes with the ZF8 speed, the 8HP 75-LV, which is a slightly upgraded version than the one that goes in the Ram 1500, but it does not get the ZF8 speed power line transmission in behind the Cummins engine. But Alex, what about the 6.6 liter gassers that come with the 10 speed Allison transmissions? Well, despite what the labeling says, I'm like 99% sure that transmission is actually different than the one that comes behind the 6.6 liter Duramax. So my point is, is that almost all the HD gas engines come with a lighter duty transmission than the diesel HD transmissions. And well, if you're still worried, the 10R100, it means, or the 100 stands for a thousand Newton meters of torque that can be put through it. That's roughly 750 pound feet. This engine is putting out a peak torque figure of 445. So you still have a lot of room to play with. In terms of known issues, a hot button topic about these Ford HD gas engines, especially the 7.3 Godzilla when it first came out was lifter failures, baby. And yes, this engine is not the 7.3 Godzilla. However, the valve train on this engine and the Godzilla are basically almost identical. This engine also uses the same style of hydraulic roller lifters. And when the 7.3 Godzilla engine came out in 2020, 2021, there was a number of engines that were reporting to fail because of lifter failures. The lifters were eating the camshafts and there was some debate as to what was causing it. Now I did do a full review and breakdown of this problem on the 7.3 Godzilla, which I can link down in the description. You can check it out if you want. So after talking to both my local dealership service departments at length, as well as scouring the internet, it became pretty clear that the 7.3 liter Godzilla engines that were experiencing lifter failures were the engines in the cab and chassis model trucks like your box trucks, ambulances, and, and so forth. The 7.3 engine in those commercial cab and chassis trucks could come with two different tunes or power settings and the economy tune has now since been discontinued is that a coincidence or not who knows we'll <laughs> we'll never know but moral of the story is is that yes the 73 godzilla did experience a number of lifter failures but the vast majority were not on the pickup truck engines. And for me, if I own this engine, I would not lose an ounce of sleep over that. My thoughts and purely speculation is that the economy tune commercial 7.3 engines, they were trying to get every bit of economy out of the 7.3 engine and probably trying to maximize the variable displacement oil pump. So when these things were at idle, which again, box trucks, ambulances, they're gonna idle quite a bit more than your average pickup truck. I would guess that the oil pump or the variable displacement oil pump was trying to save as much fuel as possible and possibly not flowing enough oil to your camshaft, to your lifters, potentially causing the problem. That would be my guess, just speculation. Let me know what you guys think. But other than that, there really haven't been any other common sort of catastrophic engine issues with the 7.3 or this engine. Now, granted this engine's only been out since 2023, but as we've mentioned or talked about, it shares basically the identical architecture as that 7.3 and it's been out since 2020, coming on to six years of real world use. And so far, it seems like a very, very reliable engine. Those are some things that I don't like about this engine. There are certainly some trade-offs or potential downgrades. 
if you're not willing to move up to that 7.3 Godzilla engine. However, if you're not willing to pay the extra money for that engine, you're still gonna be getting an extremely capable engine that's very reliable. If you guys do own one of these 6.8 liter mini Godzilla engines, let me know how it's treated you so far. Are you happy? Are you disappointed? Would you have rather gone with a bigger 7.3 Godzilla? Or, as I mentioned, are you content? Always like hearing from real world owners. If you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. If you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.